In this presentation, we're going to look at correlation coefficients. So consider two random variables, x and y. What we're asked to do here is write down the mathematical definition for the Pearson correlation coefficient, rho x of x and y between x and y. So a couple of things here to say that this is the Greek letter rho. It looks a bit like a p. Okay. Uh, we specify x and y because there could be more than those two variables. It could be w or z or something like that. So just to be uh, particular about which pair of variables you're referring to, you might put them in subscripts. So you might also see this written as rho and subscripts rather than brackets, something like that. We also sort of specify this Pearson correlation coefficient just to recognize the fact that there are other correlation coefficient types out there, such as the Spearman and the Kendall. Okay, so write down the mathematical definition for the Pearson correlation coefficient. Essentially, we have it here, okay, and we're going to use this in part B. So essentially what we just need is a, an expression like this. Rho of x and y is equal to the covariance of x and y divided by the square root of the variance of x times the variance of y. Okay, that's all we need for this one, partly because we're going to use that in part B, essentially. Okay, so let's go to part B, and we're going to pick up from here. Assume now that the value of y equals ax plus b, which is to say it's a linear transformation of the variable x, okay, where a is less than zero. Now that's actually important, okay, minus, uh, e and uh, b is between minus infinity and plus infinity, which is to say it's a real number. Nothing particularly interesting there, really, that it's just, it's just a real number, so we can just sort of treat it as a constant now. But a is specifically less than zero, it is specifically negative. So what we're asked to do here is determine the value of the correlation coefficient rho of x and y, where y is that linear transformation of x. Okay, so it has that particular, we have that particular piece of information about how it's created and how it relates to x. Okay, so first off, what we need is, oh, well, let's actually, let's just scroll this back up here, here for a second so we can keep part A in shot because we're going to make reference to that. So... The correlation coefficient is made up of the covariance of x and y, which is to say the covariance, covariance of x and ax plus b. So we, we, we can sort of disregard b from now on, really. It's just a constant. So the covariance of x and ax plus b. Well, first off, the variance of x, or the covariance of x times itself, is the variance of x, okay? So that's where that variance of x comes from. It's essentially the covariance of x times x, okay? So let's, uh, but where does this a come from? And why is it out here? So essentially what we're going to do is treat this as one times x times ax, or sorry, one times x and ax, okay? So one x and ax, essentially what we do here is when we have an expression like that, we bring out the terms, two scalar terms, and we multiply them uh, out at the front before our, our expression here. So essentially, 1 times a gives us a here, okay? That's, that's where that a comes from, okay? So the variance of y is equal to the variance of a times x plus b. And again, we can disregard b there. It's just constant. So we do something similar here. When we bring out this term here, a, out in front of the variance term there, we just square it, okay? So that's it. So for a less than or equal to zero, so for a less than zero, we uh, obtain rho x and y as follows, okay? So I'm just going to scroll down here now. So that's the where we started from in part A here. Okay, and this is where we're going to pick up. So the covariance of x and y can be written as A times the variance of x. Okay. Variance of x we leave alone. Okay. And the variance of y becomes A squared times the variance of x. Okay. So when I have the variance of x times the variance of x, uh, that becomes variance of x squared. Essentially what I've just done here is I just brought it outside that square root. So, 
and that will cancel out now with the ter term on top. So we have essentially a divided by the square root of a squared. Okay. Now this is important here because we're particularly told that a is negative. Okay. So a is great less uh, is less than zero, but a squared is greater than zero. Okay, it's positive. A squared is positive, and you also would always treat a square root as positive. Okay, so they have the same absolute value, a and the square root of a squared, but they have different signs. Necessarily, they would have different signs. So we have essentially, if the uh, this is equivalent to plus a essentially, or the absolute value of a. Okay, so a. A, a minus a, or a negative number divided by a positive number with the same absolute value just gives us minus one. Okay, it's that's it really. So um, that's quite useful in some of the stuff we're going to do later on. So just actually how uh, that particularly the fact that it's a a linear one variable is a linear transformation of the other that's particularly important.